Get up. Wake up. It's time for our dialogue. I know that I'm supposed to be in my car. Well, I'm not. This is what you're going to get today. I am stationed in my living room because I've got to get my voice right because we got a big weekend ahead of us. Cheryl Watt Denton, God bless you. Let's go, guys. It is called Chronicles time, and this is going to be a little bit different today. So glad to see you. Did you do what I asked earlier? I said, go get a friend. Get a loved one, Frederica. Who's going up the timeline? Keisha Charles Francisco is saying, morning, how are you? Keisha Grant, she said, good morning, how you doing? Cassandra Simpson, Moultrie or Moultrie is on here. Grab someone. Grab a family friend, loved one. But I'm going to guarantee you that this is going to help. That's right. Tanisha Thompson, kiss her. Good to see you. Trudy, what's going on, girl? How you doing? Carol Bryant, I'm praying for North Carolina. I'm praying for California. I'm praying for Denver, Minneapolis. I'm praying for Canada, London. I'm praying for Boston. I'm praying for... South Carolina, I'm praying for Washington, D.C., Philadelphia. I'm praying for you. We're praying all over the world right now because it's prayer time. Come on. I want to tell you something. Gather out. Gather out. Gather out. Gather out. Gather out. Hey. Listen, 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 listen. Corey Page, will you just fly too, Michelle Crawford, with your, with your paparazzi self? Diamond, what's going on? How you doing? Toshiba, small boy. Come on, I'm giving you all time because this is going to be good. Gather somebody around right now. Praying for you, New Jersey, because I believe a storm is a brewing your way. People in my inbox, it says a storm is brewing. They don't have lights. And so Dottie and Shawnee, we're praying. Frederick Ferguson is on here. How you doing? What's going on? Let's go. How are you all? Even someone's in my inbox. I believe that's Sean. What's up, Sean? You're in my inbox. You're saying what's going on. Crystal, you good? Corey Page, what's up? Let's go. Listen, I am going to say this rather quickly while people are still logging on. Old Canada is on here. If you're overseas and you're logging in, it is so good to have you from another country joining us. If you're stationed in the great U.S. of A, God bless you all. Camille, God bless you. Really quickly, I really need you guys to click, tag, and share. Lakeisha X is on here. Tell someone to come on. This is going to be good. It's going to be a little different. Cheryl Walker, I love you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Yep. She says, it looks like you're about to shake some things up. I am. <laughs> Alicia Williams. Gwen, what's up? Gwen, hook me up. Demetra Kinner is on here. God bless you all. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. This is going to hurt. Will, how you doing? I know that Atlanta, you guys are on my prayer list too. How you doing? You good out there, Will? You know why I'm asking because I know you personally. Kathy Newkirk is on here. There is the assistant pastor going up the timeline, the re-warrior. Assistant pastor, Delira Michelle, Crystal Jones. Stacey Ann, it's so good to see you as always. Let's go. Stephanetta Tag, Tara Stovall. Alisa Hickerson, I'm good. Timothy, what's going on? How's everything coming along with the wife? Tiff uh, Timothy has the most beautiful wife. Come on, y'all. Let's go. Tasha Jackson. All right. Now, listen, I'm going to get ready to start. I just want to say really quickly, thank you, um, Celinda Mumphrey, um, part of the RTB Winning Women's Movement, the Glow Sisterhood. Um, because of COVID-19 has act like a monkey, don't get I'd like to thank you for this award because they wanted to honor me. And so I thank you to RTB Women of Excellence Award for this award. I'd like to say thank you for that. And so I did get it and I wanted you to see 
that anyone that wants to honor me, God bless you, Josh, and give me an award. I am so honored. I love to stand there with you, unfortunately, but because of COVID, we were not able to do so. We had to bow out rather quickly. And so I want to say thank you for this award. I am honored to share it with the world because that's what it is. When I got the award from Essence, I say again, I don't take this by myself. I give this to the Most High God first, and then thereafter, Car Chronicles Movement, Unity Church Charlotte, we take this together. And so I'm honored to do that. This is going to hurt, but it's going to help a little bit, and it's going to be a little bit different. I need you guys to please understand that I am a woman of, 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 of character, but I have to do this because I've got to have my notes in front of me because I've got to tell you guys something. Um, there is a face of hate. There is a face of hate. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to pull the mask off and we're going to dissect it for what it is. And this video is going to help a whole bunch of us, you, under the sound of my voice. I want you to click tag and share a friend, a family member, daughters, mothers, mothers, fathers. If you have a bloodline, if you have a friendship, I want you to go through a friend that doesn't like you and tag them. Maybe you need to go through someone that um, kind of looks at Car Chronicles from afar, but they really don't know me. And so now that I've got 1,600 people under the sound of my voice, I want you to understand that hatred has a face. And this is going to help you all because most of you don't even know what it is. If, if, if you would allow me for a period of time... I need you to get a pen and a paper or maybe go back and watch this. Understand we are fasting to 12, noon, lunchtime, your time all over the world. Hatred has a face. It looks like a friend. It looks like a family member. It looks like a loved one. You even sleep with it. There are husbands and wives who uh, can't stand each other. They love the fact that they have a toxic relationship. And so I want to introduce you to a woven thread that connects hatred and jealous people together. Mm -hmm. Now, this is going to hurt just a little bit, but it's going to it's going to help you a whole lot because most people don't understand the camaraderie of the connection. Most people don't understand that it's an unhealthy relationship. It's a formulation of toxicity that most people are connected to because they don't understand what is that connection all about. Now, I've got to say something to you. I was blessed to be on KTLA in California a couple of years ago where I was speaking about my book that I did write, The Death of the Angry Black Woman. And so as I would go on and I would do television, I would tell them, never mind the color of the author that wrote it, it's the woven thread that connects the book to everybody. The woven thread is called anger, hence to where I am wearing red. The woven thread happens to be anger that everyone has an association at some point in time because most people are connected to angry people and you don't even know it. Uh -huh. Most people are connected to people who they quote unquote mm, don't really like as much. But it's that one mere inkling of something that weaves people together that we're going to uncover today. Uh -huh. Felicia Mack, God bless you, Talia. It is so good to see you. I want you to understand that something connects people together. Someone said, come on now, MJ. Something connects jealous people together. Mm -hmm. Brenda said, come on now, Pastor Teachers. Something is connecting those old friends that you used to like together. Uh -huh. Some things are connecting people that you was cool with, that you're no longer cool with. Uh -huh. Now they're hanging out. They're connected together. Oh, y'all don't like it. Something is connecting people together that you, someone said, oh, Lord, come on, intercessors, be on deck. Something is connecting people together. And you really don't know what it is. Uh huh. It's called jealousy. It's called hatred. Uh huh. Someone said, "Oh my God, what is holding it together?" Can't you, Grant? I'm so glad that you asked me. Listen to me. Get ready to write. Hatred has a surface within people. 
Write it down, because I'm telling you, y'all got to take notes. Taya said, birds of a feather. Taya knows me personally. Michelle is my best friend. Understand, Mother Adele, that's Apostle Fred D. Gooden, my future, my love, my boo-boo, my stink stink. That is his mother going up the timeline, so she got my back. So I want you to understand that something connects people together. It is an unhealthy apostle preached last night about soul ties. Did you know that you can have an unhealthy tie to somebody and you don't even know it? Okay. So I need you to write these things down. Hatred has a surface. Hatred has a surface. Now I want to read something to you. I want us all to understand the state of the world at large. The state of the world at large has somebody in office in a hierarchy position that weaves a bunch of people together. Now watch this. I want to share something to you that just makes sense. If you're watching CNN, you understand the state of the world. The state of the world is simply that way because the headship, the heart of the headship is now spewing out amongst the people. Understand, watch this. Jealousy and hatred has a face and it kind of looks like that. People who are jealous and hateful, they have a tone, write it down. They have a look and they throw a jab. Hateful people and jealous people have a tone, they have a look and they throw a jab. Write that down, Michelle. We're going to work today. Hateful and jealous people have a tone, they have a look and they throw a jab. Now, I've got to help you understand this before I get into the verbiage of it, because I want you to see something. Go with me to the book of Samuel. Mm -hmm. Samuel 18, to be exact. I want to go all the way over here because I want you to understand how it creeps in. Jealousy and hatred are buddies. Jealousy and hatred are buddies. I'm going to say it again. Jealousy and hatred are buddies. Listen. The Bible says where strife is, every evil work follows. Hence to what's going on now. I want you to understand the same situation that we are all dealing with was dealt with in the Bible. Did you know that? There was a king named Saul that was anointed David. That's what his job was. But something happened. His heart began to speak because David did a better job than he did. Now watch this. The Bible says this. When the men returned home after David killed the Philistine, meaning David conquered something that another king did not have the ability to do. God, understand jealous people and hatred people simply hate you because you have the ability to do something they do not. Listen, okay, y'all say, okay, I'm, I'm going to try to hold it down. Mm -hmm. It's a look, it's a tone, and they throw a jab. Now, I'm trying to help you identify these people. They hate you because you have been ordained to do something that they come to the conclusion I never do. Watch this. We're already seeing it in our nation. Did you know what's in the Bible? David already killed the Philistine. He came back to Saul, who gave him the high-ranking army to do the job. This pleased all the troops that Saul's officers were excited as well. When the men returned home after David killed the Philistine, the women. Whew, Terry Taylor, what's up? Oh, those jealous women. Understand, there is something very demonic about a jealous woman. It simply means that a jealous woman, the Bible said that jealousy is crueler than the grave. Hear me, you have more jealous women in the world than men. Now listen, oh, those women. The women have a tendency to amp things up. Hmm? Uh, someone said you're talking good this morning. Yvette Simmons, I got you. Uh, hear me. Jealous women have a tendency to start some mess. They, they got the tea. They, they, they have more tea than brothers. Hear me. It, it's, a, it's a trait that is not nice. A jealous woman will destroy you and they don't even have to know you. Hold on now. Wait a minute. It's going to get deep. The Bible said the women came and they said, wait, hold on. Oh, go ahead, David. They begin to have excitement and they were excited because they came to town to meet King Saul. But when they met the person that put the person in the position to do the job that they could not do, they got mad. 
Why would you get mad at somebody that can do a better job than you? You want it done right? Why are you getting upset with someone that hair may just be look a little bit better than you? Why is it that you're mad at that person and you don't have a connection? Why is it that you're angry with them because you don't have what they have? You can't do what they do. Hold on. Because secretly, come on, they're trying. Now watch me. They made a joyful song and dance and they had tambourines and layers. As they begin to dance and sing, Saul had slain a thousand. But David, he slayed 10,000. They're saying now that there's a jealous woman that is looking at people applaud you. Huh? There is a jealous man saying, huh? there is somebody in your family. Hold on, please don't play me close like butter. Play toast, hear me. There is a mother jealous of a daughter because you finished school and she didn't because she had you. God, that hurt. There is someone that's mad because you're living a life of sobriety, but yet still they're not. Hold on. There is somebody, there's a brother. He say your boys are Nipsey. If he was here, he would tell you don't work like that. Hear me. God knows, child. I'll tell you the truth. They're listening and watching you, and because you're doing something great, huh? They don't want to celebrate simply because it's you, huh? They celebrate somebody else. They'll be happy, Kim. I called you. Hear me. They'll be happy at someone else and doing uh, a job, something similar. But they'll excitedly, uh, I'll be excited that you started your earring line. they uh, uh, but you doing it. I don't like you. They'll support somebody else, but they won't support you. Because it's you, huh? Big mad, Minister Stefanetta said. And so here he is now being upset because David has done a better job. Saul was very angry and he was very wroth and he was deframed with jealousy. He was displeased very greatly. They have had created David a song. Oh, David, 10,000 you slay. So you've done a mere nothing. Nina King, they're hearing the jeers. They're hearing all of the excitement and something happened the next day. Jealous people, listen, pay attention. They have a tone, they have a look, and they throw a jab. The next day, an evil spirit came upon him from God. Now, I had to pay attention to this, Michelle, because it said an evil spirit came from God. Forcefully, meaning this. Only God has the ability to thrust something to the forefront to bring it to your attention who is around you. Mm -hmm. Sometime I say it when God gave me this revelation and knowledge, Nikia, it blew my mind because God will hurt your feelings to save your life. And sometimes God will allow someone mm -hmm, to pull the cover off of a thing simply to keep you safe, uh -huh. simply to uncover a lie, God, simply to display what people really feel about you behind closed doors. So he did this, Alkama. He allowed it to happen. He was also prophesying in his house while David was playing the lyre. David was minding his own business, playing the lyre, giving glory unto God while this man was playing the lyre. Understand Saul still was doing his job. He was speaking over the people. He was speaking over his people. Watch this. That's why jealous people have dual tongues. And I guess hey, they don't have the ability to tell you one thing great hmm? because their heart is speaking simultaneously. Hear me. That's why jealous people talk out of both sides of their neck. Hmm? Hear me. Any snake has a dual tongue, meaning this. They speak one way publicly, God, huh? but privately they throw you under the bus. Hear me. And so while he was doing his job as a king, hmm, very good, <laughs> very good, <laughs> very good. Very good. Watch this. Very good. Yes, David did it. <laughs> yes, he did that. <laughs> he did it. The Holy Spirit said while he was applauding David, he was being fake. Huh? Go and tag that old fake friend. Go and take that old fag. Let, 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 come on. That fake sister, that fake brother. Huh? That fa I'm happy for you. <laughs> I'm happy. Yes, David did it. <laughs> See, God allowed while he was prophesying to the people an evil spirit to come upon him because right in front of the people,
people. He wanted to reveal what was in his heart. Oh, God. Now, see, that's why you don't get mad when people put junk in your inbox. Huh? That's why you don't get mad at people because, oh, it's going to get deep today. Huh? Well, they say you, if you finish your degree, good. <laughs> you ain't homeless no more. <laughs> oh, you got a real love life. <laughs> oh, you, you dropped the book. You did. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible said while he was prophesying, <laughs> very good, David. <laughs> God said, I allowed the spirit uh, to reveal the truth. <laughs> and God said, he threw a javelin spear at David right in front of the people. See, <laughs> Cassandra said, you better say it. See, God will reveal the phony folks. Stay tuned. David ducked and said to himself, and I'll pin David to the wall. That's what he wanted to do. Then Saul was afraid of David. See, secretly, they don't want to applaud you because it's you. And secretly, they don't like it. God will reveal some truth. I hope you're ready for it. They ain't happy for you. Now watch this. I want to show you something. Now understand 45. It's already predicated in the land that uh -huh, he said, I'm not going to reveal the portrait of Barack Obama. Hmm? It blew my mind, Kimberly Williams, because McWilliams, because I don't understand that you could have 44 presidents mm -hmm, uh -huh, and it's customary to reveal it. But your hatred uh, don't even want to look at the person your heart has a problem with. Hear me. Be aware of false lips because they're speaking lies and slander against you simply because they hate. Hatred also has a surface. Right, right, read it right. When people are highly insecure. See, highly insecure people have a problem with you. Highly insecure people don't ever want to give you credit. Highly insecure people. You have to understand the group. Now, let's talk about the woven thread. The woven thread is hatred. That's why you never hear of a love group. You never hear of a knitting group. You never hear of a baking group. You never hear of a bird watching group. But you hear of hate groups. You hear of hate groups because they have a woving thread, a connection, simply because they connect themselves to people that have a problem with you. Huh? It means that, like Taya said, birds of a feather flock together. Now let's go deeper. Understand people who are, someone said, my, 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 Jesus. Understand people who are jealous, hateful, insecure, they have a woven thread because they are socially awkward. Y'all like this? They are socially awkward, meaning this. They are socially awkward because they cannot connect themselves because it takes love to hold things together. It takes unity to command the blessings of God. It takes the spirit of friendliness. The Bible said those that want friends must show themselves friendly. But people who have hatred, they're socially awkward because they lack the connection. They lack the fruit of the spirit. Watch me pay attention. And so what they do is they go find people that hate you. They go find recruits. So what they do is they create this false sense of safe. Huh? A false sense of slanderizing you. In order to do that, what they have to do is they have to create a lie. Because you are already the truth. Huh? They have to create a story, make one up. Huh? Simply because the hatred in them huh, wants to delude the truth. Hear me? And so the woven thread means they've got to go on a recruiting session. 
If you are looking at me, this means that you have made the cut because Pastor Jamila has had a serious block party because understand what a hate group does. It will get in the midst of unity and break things up. Now you understand what's going on. Understand someone said you hitting it on the head. Listen, they go and they find like-minded individuals. Now watch this. I need to go a little deeper. It's called a hate group for a reason because what they do is they find groups of people that hate you too. And now what they have is an unhealthy connection that bonds them together. Y'all used to be friends. Now they friends. Mm -hmm. 2,600 people under the sound of my voice go and click tag and share because I ain't even getting good yet. So it's a hate group. So what they do is they go and they find folks you used to be friends with. That's why I'm very careful with people who are friends with people that hate me. Friends with people that I don't dis I don't associate with. Why are you connected? Why? Because you guys have an unhealthy connection called jealousy or hatred. So they secretly get together and they talk about you. They secretly get together and they judge you. They secretly get together because Reggie Brown said, come on now, pastor preach. Hello, brothers. I hope y'all be here tomorrow for God's Men on Deck on French page at 7 o'clock. They secretly have something that connects them together. Hate and jealousy. If I can find two people to hate her. Then I'm not socially awkward. I'm accepted because everybody accepts her. Everybody accepts him. Everybody accepts them. And so now I've got to connect myself to something and someone that hates the leader. Someone or something that hates you. Hatred is an intense feeling or passionate or dislike for someone or something. So they connect themselves passionately to someone or something that hates you. That's why they call hate groups. Because they have to group themselves together. Because they're socially awkward. They have someone said you were telling the truth. They cannot connect themselves with people that are positive. They cannot connect themselves to good vibes only. They cannot connect themselves with love. Because a good tree cannot bear bad fruit. Huh? A bad tree. God. Every rotten apple is in a bunch that can ruin the whole pile. If you don't break that connection. Hear me. And I've got a problem with people that now want to get close to you. All of the sudden. But when you friends with someone that could not stand me. And so y'all bound together because something is causing you guys to entertain the chatter. Huh? Damn it. It's the passionate dislike you have for a person that causes the connection. No bound is stronger than two people who hate the same person. I think I saw, I'm going to say it again. Someone said, where's the through? I got shoe. Go on and throw the shoe, Kim. Throw the shoe. No bound is closer and stronger than two people that hate the same person. It simply means that there is a strong bond with people that hate someone else. That's why I teach you to watch the fruit of the spirit. Nine of them watch it. It is never displayed among people who really love someone else. No bond is tighter than that. The reason why, because they have found a connection. Those socially awkward, insecure, sad individuals that are toxic connect themselves with that bond of hatred and they keep it going by spewing venom at each other. You hate her? I hate her too. You can't stand him? Well, I heard. Well, this ain't even true. Do you know what I found out? Well, then, and so now understand, the, listen to the word, listen to the word. It said it's a passionate feeling, a dislike. And so their passion fuels when they get together. Well, I know the tea. Well, she, well I don't like her anyway. I'm going to say this. Watch this. Write this down. Anytime you come in contact with someone that hates you and don't like you, they have a distaste for you and they have never, ever, ever hug you, touch you, been in your presence, you need to be careful about that person. Because how do you hate someone that you've never met before? The word of God says it. He says, how do you hate your brother and sister who you see every day, but love God that you have never seen? It's so stupid. It's an unhealthy, toxic mental illness that you might need to be careful about. And it could be your mama. It could be your daddy. It could be your dog. It could be your girlfriend. No, she ain't your girlfriend. She really don't like you. 12 million views. They just don't like me. And 
is still going, which means 12 million people around the world has seen the clip that God gave me for the people. They just don't like you. They don't need a reason to like you. It's simply because of who you are. They can't stand it. Listen, I don't like her. I don't like him. It's just something about them. Have you ever been in a room with them? Have you ever hugged them? Have you ever, do you know them personally? No, you don't. I just don't like them. Why? Because it's an insecurity that they finally come to the conclusion, I'll never have that. They come to the conclusion, I'll never measure up to that. They come to, someone said, you are in my house right now. Alicia, I got you. It simply means I've come to the conclusion with my emotionally imbalanced self, with my crazy mental way of thinking that I'm never going to measure up to them. So because I don't measure up with them, I may as well connect myself to people who don't like them so I can feel important too. They just don't like you, man. Accept it. The, let me tell you what Bishop, uh, I'm not going to even say his name because y'all going to be in this inbox. I'm going to tell you what this very profound, popular preacher told me. He said the best way to kill a lie is never to feed one. So what they do is they create a false sense of not self, a false lie about you so people won't like you so they can have one person to agree with their imbalance that I don't like that person. And so you have to understand they're highly insecure that people like you. And so you become a threat. Thank you, Minister Stefanetta. You become a threat. And so since they're threatened by you, God, they try to destroy you. Oh God, where is King Saul and David in the midst of what I'm saying? We can even bring 45 and Barack Obama into this. What has he personally done to you? 45. Now, they ain't going to like me today. Y'all better get ready Sunday. They perfect. Did you sleep with Melania? Melania? Mimika? Well, what was the woman name? Huh? Did you, did you, did you, did you kill his dog? Okay, he don't have dog. Did he, okay, well, he don't have cat. Did he sleep? Did he, tr did he trash Trump Plaza? Did, did he stay in your hotel and write his name on the wall? Barack Obama was here. Well, what did he do? How can you hate someone that personally did not do anything to you? It's cruel of the degrade. Why are y'all laughing at me? The Bible said that jealousy is crueler than the grave. And Saul hated him because he was doing a better job. He hated him because he displayed the fruits of the spirit. And people don't like you because... Why are y'all why y'all laughing? People don't like you because you simply display the fruits of the spirit. The fruits of the spirit is love, compassion. Hear me. Read the word of God. And so God says, what I'm going to allow them to do is attack you because you've got to know those that labor among you. Hear me? And so what they do is they formulate a hate group to hate you. Even in your, someone said, man, it, 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 it simply means that in your family, your sister really don't like you. Your brother don't either. What about, I told you, if your own mama don't like you. And so what they do is they get on this thing. Someone said preach. They get on this thing and they start rumors and lies. Put lies in your inbox, lies in your DM. Simply because they set out to say to themselves, I am never going to be able to measure up to that. So I may as well kill it. No, you can't kill what God ordained, dummy. Hear me. And so I want you to understand. They share that common woven thread. And Tanetta, Tonya Ford, I love you. Nina, thank you for that. So they share a negative feeling or opinion about that person. And so what they do is they find people to connect with that same feeling. Now watch this. Understand this. If you find someone that hates you and they've never met you before, or they're friends with someone that you don't rock with anymore, ask yourself why. Nine times, someone said, ouch. Nine times out of ten, they're running around spreading lies about you because they really don't want to know, they don't want people to know the truth, that you help them. You pay their bills. You put tires on their car. See, they run and tell you all the bad stuff, but they oblique the good stuff. Now, while you run around kicking in that girl's back or that brother's back, or you run around there kicking in their back, Tell a whole truth and shame the devil. Not part of it. Tell it all. Before you talk about the pastor, talk about how the pastor put you on the plane to go see your father that was almost dead. And you couldn't even have. Tell him how the pastor put groceries in your car. Tell him how the pastor paid your rent because you was getting evicted. Tell him how the pastor put time. Tell him everything the pastor did. Don't leave out the put. Hold on. Tell him how the pastor helped you, the family, put your ex-wife in the grave. Tell it all. Don't tell how. Tell it all. But they don't tell you all of that because it makes them look just like they are. 
socially awkward. It makes it, okay, people said, Lord, I'm, I'm going to throw my shoe at the pastor. No, tell it all. Before you throw your leader under the bus, before you throw your mama, your daddy, whoever it is that they got a problem with, where is your friend of me? Tag them in this. Before y'all became enemies, y'all was friends. She was the friend that helped you, simple, but you messed it up. And so now you got a problem with them because you no longer down with them. No, understand this. They now have a woven thread connected to somebody that makes them feel justified that they got thrown out, they're ostracized, or they're no longer connected to you. See, they gonna get mad at them for messing up. They get mad at you for not accepting their screw up. The light bulb goes off eventually. So what they do is they formulate, someone said, please don't put your mouth on the leader. What they do is they formulate a hate group concerning you. They, they understand they don't even sleep because an un, and listen, they don't even sleep at night because of you, because they have an intense, passionate and a distaste and a dislike for you so much. They don't even sleep. Nina said you were speaking this morning. They don't even sleep. Their whole goal is to destroy you. Their whole goal is simply to ruin the viewpoint that people have of you, that you are positive, they're negative. So what they do is they said, I'm going to kill it. That happened with Saul. Listen to me. People want a scapegoat. They want a scapegoat. Well, what is a scapegoat? The struggle with them is they have low self-esteem and they find groups to connect themselves to, to hate you too. So the way they feel, they can put it on someone else. Oh, you feel the same way too? Well, I remember when she did that. Well, I remember when he did that. Listen to me. Hateful people always got to... Listen, it's, a, it's, it's a borderline narcissism. It, 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 people who are hateful and jealous. Someone said, whoa, she's running. He's just not, he's so crazy. They have a scapegoat. They look for a scapegoat. They look for a person to blame how they feel on. And that's you. I remember when I had a meeting with a young lady and she came inside of the meet. The heifer ain't say hello. She didn't say, how you doing? She didn't say, what's going on? She didn't say, hey, Apostle Fred. She didn't say that. When she walked through the door, the first thing she said is, you think you perfect. I was like, well, who are you talking to? Okay, hold on. I forget. I'm in the church. She said, you think you perfect. I said, well, who, who, who are you talking to? First of all, yeah. And, you know, Fred really is my balance. He really keeps me calm. A lot of people don't know that. And so, you know, he was like, nah, chill, babe, chill, chill. I was like, yo, who? All Brooklyn about to rise up, right? And so, <laughs> the first thing she said, thank you, Stephanetta. She said, you think you perfect. And I'm like, yo, this ain't got nothing to do with me. Before she opened up her mouth, she already revealed what she had thought of me. That she feels that I'm perfect. I'm like, yo, son, can I get a hug, a hello, or something? Nah, you ain't gonna stab me in the back. You sit over there. And you gotta be very careful because people already, y'all laughing, they already got a, vo a viewpoint of you. And so instead of being accountable for herself, saying that I'm accountable for what I feel because I really have not understood that I have a problem, I'm gonna put it all on you. You think you're perfect. Someone said, come on now, MJ. So now the person that's jealous of you, oh, you think you all that because you drive in a car? No, they want you to have a car as long as it ain't better than theirs. They want you to have a man. Oh, God, well, I ain't going to even go down that buddy trail. They ain't got that much time. They don't want you to have a man. They want you to have a miserable man like they got. But when the men, hold on, you don't know I done been through hell and high water and I'm rejoicing and those that rejoice with me, thank you, Jesus. But they don't want you to have a man. They want you to have a miserable Maybe he gay, maybe he ain't. I don't know. Maybe he beat you, maybe he don't. Maybe he was unfaithful, maybe he ain't. Maybe I, I don't know what you got, but God decided to bless me with somebody good. And so what they do is they get mad because you... Now, if I had my therapist, because I'm a pastor that believes in therapy, I would teach you about people who have mentally... Mental... Un, Mentally unhealthy connection. So in their mind, 2,700 people, they have a mental connection that's unhealthy with a person that they desire. God. But yet still, the reality is that's never going to be what you want. That's never going to be who you desire. It's You're never going to have that. You know, Except what God gave you. And so they get angry because reality kicked in. I never had that. 
I'll never drive that. I'll never look like that. I'll never be that. I'm not saying me. I'm saying whatever situation you in. You went to school and I did. Well, you, you got out of your situation. I'm still in mine. So now that unhealthy connection tells them, no, you had an unhealthy connection. You deal with your reality. This is mine. Y'all, okay. Uh, MJ, log off. No, I'm not logging off. <laughs> they do that when I've stepped on folks' feet. A hurt dog will holler every time. And so what they do is they use you as a scapegoat. Go. You think you're better than me. You No, growing up is not that I think that I'm better than you. It simply means that I am maturing. No, they have a problem that you're no longer the person that they, you used to be. There are people that want you to be the same old blind, doped up, light bulb, never going off, being in a dark person. They're good with that because that means that you always be beneath them. Someone said you preach in the state. And so they become a scape group. Oh, you think you better than me now? Have you ever had people say that? Oh, you think you all that? Have you ever had people say that? Well, you think you all that? You, you, oh, you got all that? You all that now? I remember having two stupid people. I'm going to call them stupid because this is me. This is my testimony. Jen, I remember having two stupid people, which turned out to be a third. They all had the same language. Call me back when you become the same person you was years ago. No, I grew up. That means when I was the person that I used to be. That means I could I did everything that you asked me to do and never told you no. And then the same person said the same thing. You change. Well, hell, I'm supposed to change. I'm supposed to have EI, emotional intelligence, that makes me a better person. Don't nobody want to be the same old person, especially when you light bulb off and you realize you've been used and abused. So now you're not the person you used to be. That's the scapegoat. Oh, you change. No, I grew up. Huh? All right. Loneliness. Most people who are hateful and jealous are very lonely people. Yeah, they are. Because they're socially awkward. It is easy for them to dumb down a person with a positive connection. They create a negative one. It is easy for them to dumb down a person with a positive connection. Then they create a negative one about them. They're very lonely people. They're very lonely. They're very lonely. So because they're isolated and lonely, people don't really want to rock with people who don't display the fruits of the spirit. That's why I tell you, watch the fruit of the spirit. They don't want to connect themselves to a positive person because of the negative energy. Listen. And so they're very lonely people, which listen to this. They have a fear of the unknown. The fear of the unknown, meaning the unknown possibility that they could possibly be a little bit better in certain areas than you. So let me keep everybody in the dark concerning the truth of that individual that everybody likes. Listen to me. Listen to me. They, 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 they create a bond an unhealthy bond with people who are just like them because the fear is I'm not so bad if I find somebody that hate her too or hate them too or hate you too. That means that if I can find one person, you could have a half a million people that say very good, very good, very good, very good. And you can have one negative Nancy. It's like that ain't very good. Da, 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 da. Listen to their language. Listen, that's why y'all got to pray for emotional intelligence because people who have emotional intelligence don't act like this. <laughs> they don't. They're very lonely people. I don't care what you say to them. They can have a bunch of people around them and they will still feel lonely because they need everybody to like them. I don't need everybody to like me. Just Fred and my kids, and God knows Unity Church Charlotte, I thank God for them. But even me being a pastor, there's a lot of people in my church that really don't like me. They just did for their own gain. Joke's on you, Jack. Someone said this is a rich session. Listen to me. It's the mutual dislike. You got one cousin that don't like you. Now she hooking up with another cousin that like you. Now the whole family don't like you. It's a venom that is spread through a mutual dislike. It's a mutual dislike. It's a deep-seated hatred and envy from a scared, insecure person that came to the reality.
that they will never measure up to wherever you are. Mic drop. Listen to me. I want you to write this down. This type of behavior comes at a cost. I'm going to go there. I want you to also watch this. Write this word down. Vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Vulnerability. Hateful people can never be vulnerable. It's going to make sense. Someone said, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen, they can never be vulnerable. The reason why I'm saying this is there's some people that have trust issues that are afraid to be vulnerable because they were hurt. I'm saying hateful, jealous people will never be vulnerable because it means you've got to reveal the truth. They will never be vulnerable to you about the person they dislike because it means they've got to reveal the truth about how they feel about the person. See, that's why God allowed an evil spirit to come upon Saul because he said, no, you ain't going to fool these people no more. I'm going to show you, show them publicly what you think about David and privately. See, that's why y'all got to be careful when people come against you, when they get on Facebook and they start slanderizing your name, when they get in your inbox, when they start talking about you, when they start, with, it, it's coming from a source. And God is saying, I've got to reveal the source because it's in their heart. And so I'm going to allow an evil spirit to come upon Saul so it can be reveal why he's there prophesying and he's there clapping and he's saying good job David he's really showing people how he feels about Barack Obama oh did I say that I'm sorry he's the world oh ooh, ooh, black people oh did I say it sorry but I'm not he's really telling people how they really feel about your sister is going to show you exactly how she feels about you. Your brother is going to show you exactly. Someone said, I'm running to the back. Please run to the back because I'm going to say it louder for the people in the back. God is going to reveal to you how people really feel about you. And nine times, watch this, nine times out of ten, he reveals it by blessing you right in front of their face. God knows he did. And David killed uh -huh. And so when they begin to look, they begin to applaud a thousand to the ten thousand right in front of the haters face. Uh, God said, I'm going to reveal the blessing by blessing the person you're trying to persecute right in front of your face. And then he threw a javelin because God revealed it. God is about to give you one of those oops miracles. <laughs> those oops miracles. <laughs> Everyone who wants a oops miracle. It simply means God's going to say, let me bless you. Oops. Uh, that's the person right there that really ain't happy for you. Oh, 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 dang. Huh? And God said, show up to them the face of hate and the unhealthy connection because that's what it is. And you're saying, well, what did I ever do? You ain't do nothing. Continue to be your great self. Continue to shine. Continue to let the whole world understand that it's blessing time and one just happened to fell on me because God said, there is where I'm going to reveal that unhealthy connection and why they really don't like you because I've got to reveal it. And so the word of God said, Saul took a javelin and threw it in the middle of everybody. Wow. He was applauding David's good work. Oh, we're all feeling the effects now around the world, aren't we? And so they really are going to show you what they think because they get lies and they stick them in the inbox and they create a mess and they don't really know the entire message. <laughs> oh gosh, I can't wait to his reveal. People go say, oops. <laughs> now here we go. It, it comes at a cost. Gigi, what you doing, Gigi? You sewing? Okay, see, Gigi is very wise. I'm going to have him do a Facebook with me one day. We were talking about the unhealthy connection, G. So it comes at a cost because um, positivity and passion is also painful. Yeah, uh -huh. positivity and passion is also painful. It's painful to the person that's watching people passionately applaud you in your season. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. God. It, it, it becomes a, a positive uh, a reaction when people, just like the women saying, oh, very good, David. Uh -huh. It became painful to the person that passionately hated David. Uh -huh. And so... G said, that's how it is. Someone said, I'm seeing today. Uh -huh. That ooh, blessing is coming, Keisha. Trust me, because you ain't going to lose nothing. Hear me. Go on and let them talk about you. Go on and let them start lies. Uh, anytime somebody starts a lie about you, hold on and wait for the truth. Uh, it's theirs, mine, and God's truth. Uh, and when God reveals the truth, uh, it means that you ain't going to look so smart. You 
going to look, Missy said, come on, Pastor. You going to look quite dumb because you created a lie because you were hateful. And now when the truth come out, oops, oops, I did it again. I'm feeling kind of Britney. She in the back. I play. I don't know her song like that, but I know Jay's. You don't understand that you're creating a lie simply because you can't handle the truth, man. And so it comes at a cost because when the truth come out, <laughs> bring them out, bring them out. It's hard to speak when the barrow's in your mouth. It's going to be hard to speak when God slapped the truth in your face. He did it to Saul when in the middle of him clapping. He threw the jab and they said, ooh, ooh, ooh. looky, looky. You ain't so happy for, for David after all. Oh, you... And someone said, I'm seeding right now. You ain't so happy I started a business after all. You ain't as happy that God says my time to have a good, 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 good man. You, 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 you ain't happy at all that I decided to come out of my mess while you still struggling in yours. You, you, you ain't as happy that, that man stay focused G-I-M. You ain't, you, you know it, you ain't as happy as I thought because God says, now I've got to reveal the unhealthy Connection. Someone says, I'm getting ready to get on the bus and move to Charlotte right now. Come on, we got room. You ain't as happy that 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 my paparazzi line is doing better than yours. You ain't as happy as that I met my quota. You, you, I didn't die in this. Oops, sorry. And so, uh, uh, <laughs> y'all's comments are killing me. It, it comes at a cost. Are you willing to pay it by being negative? Are you willing to pay it by being a Nancy, negative Nancy and a bit of Betty and a bit of Bob or Bill? It, it comes at a price because when the truth come out, we ain't going to look stupid. They ain't going to look stupid. You are. Uh, someone said, where am I sowing to see that? www.carchronicles.org. Hear me. It, 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 it's not it, when I cut the ribbon to my business that you said I'll never have. Hold on. It's not going to come because nine times out of ten, that unhealthy connection that you formulated with someone else, when the truth is revealed, they're going to look at you like. See, everybody ain't looking so smart connected to 45 now. No, everybody don't look so good when the truth is revealed. Right. If that said, people are not even happy that I decided to follow Jesus. <laughs> Well, they didn't like Jesus. Certainly, they're not going to like you. First John says, how can you love your brother and sister, but yet still you hate God and you've never seen him? Uh, I just don't understand because some of the worst people alive call themselves Christian. First John 2 and 9 says, whosoever says he is the light and hates his brother, you are living in darkness and so when you have people around you trying to shed shade might i say that shade comes from a dark place doesn't it <laughs> that's me and michelle's laugh shade comes from a dark place and so when you have shade throwers they're simply uh first john to a nine is in effect the the shade throwers only throw from a dark place it's in them. Uh, oh, hold on. I, 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 listen to me. Ephesians 4.29 says, Let no corrupt talk come out of your mouth, but only such as good for those to build them up, as it is fit for the occasion. They can't even have an occasional fit to say something positive during your season. The Word of God said in Ephesians 4, For it is fit for the occasion. I'm so happy for y'all. You're winning. I'm good that you came out. Oh, it's your season. I'm happy. Even the word that I read said rejoice for those that rejoice. Mourn for those that mourn. And they can't even rejoice for you because it ain't in them. They don't even understand that it's fit for the occasion even. And so you connect yourself with that. 
Well, birds of a feather flock together. It says that may I give grace to those who hear it. So he's saying that even when you hear someone that says, I'm really happy for you and you really mean it, God won't give the person that you applauding grace. He'll give it to the person that's given the applaud grace. See, you hurt yourself. It's a cost that comes with being jealous, hateful. It means that you won't even prosper. And it ain't the person that you hates for. It's yours. You're using that person as a scapegoat because you're trying to escape that you are the goat, not the sheep. Oh, that hurt. Let me read something else. Proverbs 8 and 13, it says, fear the Lord is hatred of evil, pride and arrogance and the way of evil and pervert speech. He said, I hate it. The God of love has the ability to hate. Watch this because theologian is not going to tell you that. God is not a God of hate. He doesn't hate anybody. He doesn't hate anybody. Anybody. Color, creed, sexuality. He don't hate nobody. He loves. He's a God of love. The problem he has, he says, I have a problem with people who hate. He has the ability to hate. The ability to hate. Hear it. Watch it. It's here. He said in Proverbs 8 and 13, fear the Lord. Is hatred of evil, pride and arrogance in the way of evil, and perverse speech. He hates that. That means he has a strong dislike. He said he doesn't hate them. He has a hatred towards. Like, I love dresses, but I don't care to wear that dress. I don't like the color. It don't mean that I don't like to wear dresses. The God of love has the ability. Listen, pay attention, all of you deep Ignorant folks that say God hates this and God hates that too and God hates gays and God hates... No, no. You're ignorant and you destroyed because of that. He has the ability to dislike everything and everybody. The ability is he hates sin, not people. He can't let no man be lost. I just lost people there. They didn't like that, but y'all be all right. Understand, he has the ability. Listen to me. He said, a commandment that I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also are loved to have love for one another. But by this, you know that, are, that all of you are my disciples. And if you have love for one another, that is what you'll be. I uncovered it. A lot of people don't like it, but it's okay. You don't like it, but I had to say it because most people don't understand this. Watch this. Write down Proverbs 6. You're fasting to 12 o'clock. Write, write this down. There are six things that the Lord hates. Seven are an abomination to him. A haughty eye. A lying tongue. So when you have a hateful, jealous people, person, put lies about you, slander your name, create hatred and bitterness, God is already saying, I hate the way they are responding and acting. I hate that. So they get the problem. You don't. He said, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood. It, you can murder somebody with your mouth. Meaning you are causing, God bless you, Pastor Bureau, you are causing yourself to be in a lot of trouble when you slanderize somebody's name, especially with information you know not of. God says, that's your problem. He said, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans. Animal fight. It simply means that he has a strong dislike for people that sow seeds of discord. He has a strong dislike for people who sit in your church, who sit in your job, who sit at the dinner table, people you sleep with, whether you have a bloodline called family or not, you invite them over to Thanksgiving dinner, that's your mama, your daddy, your dog. He has a problem with people who devise schemes and wicked plans against you. He got a problem with it. He said, feet that run to evil. That means people that find out the tea. People that are hateful, people that put lies together to hurt you, and people that agree with that. People don't have, no, I heard a post, it was so profound. I'm not mad at the liar. 
I'm mad at the person that, uh, that listened to the lie. I'm not mad at the liar. The liar doing what he does. I'm mad at the person who agreed with the lie. He has a problem with people that connect themselves with people that have a lie and putting it on you and they agreeing with it. That means that's the woven thread. That's the connection. Oh, you. Oh, I believe that lie too. You too. So now they have a strong bond, an unhealthy connection. That's what it is. False witnesses. Anybody that knows a false witness, just give an angry face. Someone that lied on you, lied on me, lied on, just, they just lie. The Bible says a false witness who breathes out lies and one who sows discord among the brethren. I got people in my church and they really think that they're going to sow discord among the brethren. That ain't going to happen because God said, what I'm going to do is they're going to throw a jab at you. And it's, oh Lord, all y'all know. Okay. Since I ain't by myself, but Sean, what's up? All these people right now, under the sound of my voice, we're on one accord, 2,600 people. Listen, we're all on one accord right now. God said, I'm going to reveal them. He said, I'm going to bless you in front of them. And the blessing is going to be so great until it's going to smoke a rabbit out of a hole. Eh, I think I stop. It's one of those blessings that they're going to be like, whoa. It's one of those blessings that God said, David, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a person that is so unexpected to win anything in life. And I'm going to take that under the dog and I'm going to thrust them to the forefront. And that person that said that they was your gold dog, cool with you, child, I'm going to make them do some stuff. And you're going to be, she said that about me. Really? You know how many times people put stuff in my inbox about me and they're like, they said that about me? Really? I ain't shy. Oh, well. <laughs> winning. They don't like it that you're winning. They said that about you? Please, save it. I don't even want it in my inbox because my inbox is anointed. I use it to pray for people and call people. When God blesses you, that's what happened. Those hateful people come out the hole. Those jealous people come out the hole. And they throw a jab in because God said, it's your season. I promise you, it's unhealthy. That is what connects them together. It connects them together. It's an unhealthy connection that you wonder, why are they friends? Why would she say that? Why are they still... They never used to hang out. Now they hanging out. I thought she was my sister. I thought she was my brother. I thought they were really happy. Tamika Smalls Brown, good to see you. I thought they were really happy for me. I, they act like they were happy. They said that they were happy. It's an unhealthy connection. It's an unhealthy connection called hate and jealousy. It's an intense feeling or passion of dislike. For someone or something that they formulate a hate group simply because it's you. They're insecure. They're lonely. They're hateful. They're prideful. They look for scapegoats. They have a fear of the unknown. They're mentally unhealthy. They have a surface of hatred that God has to reveal. And they all had mutual dislikes. They will never be vulnerable because it means they have to be truthful to you about the situation, the person, or the thing. They please understand they never ever are going to measure up to you. And so they're afraid because reality said it. I'm never going to have what she has. I'm never going to do what she does. I'm never going to be who they are. I'm never going to have that. I'm never going to do anything remotely close to what God has anointed them to do. And that's why I hate them. But God says, if you can be faithful over a few things, then I'll make you ruler over many. Perhaps that's why they're double-minded and have nothing and they're unstable in all of their ways. If this message has helped you, Seed on it. God bless you.